Brian, uh, talk to me about the ops framework. Uh, break it down, make it simple for everybody to understand. I think this is one of the most efficient frameworks I've seen in some time. Yeah, I've been using this for a couple of years now. Anything that I do over and over and over, like writing cold emails, I try to think of ways to put a framework behind it or do it a little bit smarter. What I looked at and analyzed from my own emails and what was actually leading to replies and successful outcomes, i.e. booking opportunities, was they often led with some sort of like trigger or observation that was relevant to either that company or that persona right off the bat with no fluff. The second is I'm actually framing up a little bit more of the problem instead of just saying something like, our solution works by doing X, Y, and Z, very feature-driven. You're actually sharing that problem statement first of like how it's challenging to that persona, as well as the solution in there for more of a benefits and an outcomes point of view. At the very end of it, um, a lot of readers, when they open up their email, they get a lot of automated junk. So they often look at the very top and the very bottom to just be like, hey, did this email I got from James Buckley, is this AI or is this James? Did he take his time on this? Yeah. So at the very bottom of the email, I put in a PS. I pretend like PS stands for personalization. So I pull something really specific from their LinkedIn profile. As an example, so you've been at Sell Better for, I'm making this up, but almost five years now, huge congrats. That's just close, actually. <laughs> just something like ultra, ultra specific that screams like, hey, this was only written to James Buckley and nobody else in the world. Yeah. I also leave off with a really simple CTA. So instead of like, hey, do you have time next Tuesday or Thursday at these six different time slots? It's just like, have you ever heard of us before? Is this even on your radar? Uh, worth a short conversation. Yeah. They know you're asking for a demo. Um, you know, you can play it a little bit more casual and cool than just, you know, asking for an hour of their time. If you guys aren't picking up on his casual tones, this is how he speaks to his prospects as well. Like that's one of the best parts about this framework is that you are able to lean into your authenticity because it's a very simplified framework that anyone can execute on. Uh, all right, Justin, this is your yep. framework. Now you guys are seeing these two frameworks. Don't worry. We're going to circle back. You'll see them a couple times throughout the show, uh, but break this one down for everybody and how you've been using it. And yeah. some good, we got some examples coming your way, everybody. So stick around. Yeah. So pretty straightforward. I would say it's actually very similar to what Brian's offering. The only thing I would say differentiates us as far as like what we're doing is we try to hammer down a case studies, right? And I don't mean case studies as in we helped a staffing company get XYZ result. Like we try to be as specific as possible when we're putting case studies. So this will go into batching, which we'll discuss later as far as how I set up the campaigns. But think about from your viewer's perspective, or reader's perspective is, let's say we're selling to a marketing agency, right? They wouldn't resonate with a case study for a SaaS company. So we want to try to match up the case study. So that's mm. where I would say we differentiate. The other parts of the framework, very similar. You know, we have a personalization observation, something that hooks them in. And then we have a value proposition. You know, this is where batching also comes into play. Like being specific to your audience, this is where we try to make this unique, right? So overall, like we just follow this framework and then we play around with value props and case studies. Generally, you know, if you're selling one product, the pain point is always, almost always the same. Like the pain point yeah. you solve is almost always the same. So. Yeah. One of the, uh, the important variables here is this value proposition focus. 